remorse, he follows his ruthless mob boss, Tony the Ant Spilatro, to Las Vegas for a glittering opportunity to live the high life. First year in Las Vegas was good, made a lot of money, did a lot of partying, did a lot of gambling. Yeah, it was very good. But his hopes for hitting the jackpot die. But then it got to be very bad. No. When his boss decides to take him out. Clean your dirty laundry. But breaking the mob's code of silence could mean the death of his dark American dream and the end of the entire Chicago outfit. Do I consider myself a rat? Absolutely. In Chicago, thanks to bootlegging Tommy guns and extreme violence, organized crime first makes a name for itself in the 1920s, led by the infamous Al Capone. The Chicago mob is known as the Outfit. Under Capone's leadership, the Outfit earns a reputation as the most dangerous mafia gang in the world. By 1975, the Outfit orders the killing of their own boss, Sam Giancana, as he is about to testify for the FBI. That same year, they allegedly orchestrate the disappearance of union leader Jimmy Hoffa. In the 1970s, the outfit sets its sights on Las Vegas. Well, the Chicago uh, outfit's interest in Las Vegas was uh, primarily the uh, operation of the skimming at the hotels that they controlled. Dennis Arnoldi is a retired FBI agent assigned at the time to the Las Vegas division. I uh, worked in the area of organized crime, specifically the Chicago outfit. In the 1970s, the outfit controls three casinos in Las Vegas. Mob boss Tony the Ant Spilatro runs their operations on the Strip. Despite his small stature that earned him his nickname, Spilatro is a notoriously ruthless enforcer for the outfit. Tony Spilatro was a tough guy. He could really handle himself. In 1971, Spilatro sets up shop in Vegas to handle the outfit's business there. Fencing stolen goods, extorting locals, and skimming gambling profits. By 1979, business is booming for the outfit. But Spilatro needs more muscle to control the casinos. He turns to his childhood friend from Chicago, Frank Culotta. Culotta is a second-generation criminal, loyal to the Mafia's code of complete obedience and willing to do whatever it takes to please Spilatro. Frank Colato was cold-blooded. He was a killer. He was a criminal. Tony trusted Frank to do the right thing for the outfit. And I said, what are you expecting out of me out here? What's my function going to be? He, first of all, wanted me to watch his back to make sure that he wouldn't get whacked. He also wanted me to uh, keep in contact with pit bosses, casino managers, and the stardust. What I've learned about being connected to the outfit is you definitely had to follow the protocol. If you went against it, you were going to get either reprimanded, beaten up, or killed. Kulata also realizes there is money to be made in Vegas for himself and the outfit, which gets a cut of any crime an associate commits. It did look like easy pickings, probably, to the uh, Chicago outfit. You know, everybody wants to move to Vegas. It was a town, you know, people think the streets are lined with gold. Sure, I thought it was a great opportunity to live in Vegas. The exploits of Culotta and his boss, Tony Spilatro, became the basis for Martin Scorsese's 1995 film, Casino. In the movie, the character based on Tony Spilatro was played by Joe Pesci and Frank Culotta by actor Frank Vincent. And just like in the film, the real mobsters have Vegas in their back pockets. A lot of money was going out through the skimming and they wanted to make sure that it was getting back to them in Chicago. So far, local law enforcement is powerless to stop the mob's reign over Sin City. But a crackdown is coming one that will eventually weaken the outfit's hold on Vegas forever. In Vegas, Tony Spilatro asks Culotta to put together a crew of the best criminals he can find, a team that would come to be known as the Hole in the Wall Gang. Back in the early 80s, alarm systems uh, were not as sophisticated as they are today. Frank Culotta's crew understood this. Therefore, they would often just bash a hole in the side of the wall. Therefore, they earned the nickname as the Hole in the Wall Gang. Kulata's team 
will also function as professional enforcers for the outfit. The guys in my crew that I put together, one was a master burglar. His name was Leo. The other one was a soldier, Ernie. Wayne was also an armed robber with a clean face. When I say clean face, he could give up face to pull an armed robbery because he lived in Chicago, he'd come back and forth. Then I had Larry. He was uh, a killer. No different than a serial killer. Loved to kill. Close your eyes. Frank's crew in Las Vegas certainly would deal with people that they felt had stolen money from the mob, cheated the mob, that type of thing. They were used for that type of situations. Spilatro also plans to use Culotta's crew to earn some easy money. He guarantees them a piece of the action, and then he sets the hole in the wall game loose on Las Vegas. For Culotta, it's a chance to live it up in Las Vegas and improve his standing in the mob. As long as he stays on the good side of Spilatro and the Chicago outfit, the opportunities seem endless. We robbed a lot of drug dealers. They were the easiest ones to rob. We robbed everything there was to be robbed as long as there was money involved. First year in Las Vegas was good, made a lot of money. A lot of money. We robbed a lot of jewelry stores. Yeah, it was very good. The one who makes the most money has got the most power. It's all about money. Culotta's crime spree makes him a rising star in the Vegas criminal world. And the job comes with perks. Did a lot of partying, did a lot of gambling. I had a lot of girls around me, you know, they wanted to be around wise guys. It was a glamorous life. But Culotta's increasing status in the outfit is threatened after he becomes involved with a small-time crook and drug dealer named Jerry Lisner. Jerry Lisner was a individual in Las Vegas. He had a reputation as a con man. I was introduced to this Lisner guy, and I didn't like this guy very much because I could see he was sort of like a weasel. He approached Frank one time regarding scam he was going to run. When Lisner found out who I was connected to, meaning Tony Spilatro, he latched on to me. But Spilatro and Culotta find out that Lisner is cooperating with the feds. Jerry Lisner testified in a federal grand jury. At that point, Frank and uh, Tony were concerned about what he might have said. He said, we gotta kill him. Culotta, following mob rules, obeys Spilatro. I never got any joy out of killing people. That's what I had to do. I mean, if I was ordered to do it, whatever it was, I'd have to do it. Motion goes out the window. Hey, Frank. How you doing, baby? All right, how are you? Yeah, all right, what's up? With his lookout man, Wayne, outside, Culotta moves in for the kill. Culotta, always the loyal soldier, carries out his orders. I shoot him in the head. First two went in there, they were rapid, real fast. Bang, bang. He's running. What are you doing? Hey, what? I'm still running, and I know I'm shooting him in the head. And I just can't understand why nothing's happening. Murdering Lisner proves more difficult than expected. Natural reaction for anybody, if you're this far into a murder, is to complete it. So the best thing I could do is strangle him. The cord just snapped. Meanwhile, there's blood all over the place. Then, Kulata hears someone enter the apartment. My first reaction when the door would open was to get myself in a defense mode where I could attack. And it was Wayne. If somebody else came in that door, I would have had to kill him. Frank, what do you need? Bullets. He must have heard the shots, wonders why I'm not coming out, so he comes in to give me a hand. I reload the gun. 
put a pillow on the back of his head. And I emptied a, the rust on his face. You are almost at a bit of panicking right at that time. Kulana does whatever it takes to get the job done, expecting that Spilatro will be loyal in return. I drag him and I throw him into the pool. So uh, wash anything evidence he had on him of me goes in the pool. Frank Collada and Tony Spilatro would only consider it a business situation. Whether they liked him or not, they felt that murder would have to be conducted in order to protect them, specifically, and the outfit in general. Las Vegas police suspect that the outfit has something to do with the killing and numerous other crimes around the city, but they don't have any hard 